Hello and welcome to the world of real numbers, part two. Here we will be discussing about fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now, before we go into the depths of fundamental theorem of arithmetic, let's get back to the definition of prime numbers and composite numbers. Now, what are prime numbers? Prime numbers are those numbers which are divisible only by one or by themselves. The lowest prime number is two, three, these are all prime numbers. It will go up to infinity. You will notice over here that they are divisible only by themselves or by one. On the other hand, composite numbers, like supposing I take four or I take eight or nine or 12, these are all composite numbers. And you will notice that they can be written as a product of their primes. So this uh, concept about composite numbers, that is they can be written as a product of the primes, is expressed in the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So what does it state? Let us take two uh, numbers over here before we go to the entire statement and talk about the uniqueness of the prime numbers. Here, I'll let's take out the prime factors of this number. So we get here 117. This again is divisible by 3, so 3, 3 is 9, 3, 9 is 27, and 3, 1 is 3, 3, 3 is 9, and 13. So uh, these are the prime factors of 234, and they are going to remain the same where, whenever you multiply 234 or whenever you factorize 234, you will get these prime factors. And if you multiply these prime factors, you will always get 234. They are unique for 234. If I take 5005 and I take out the prime factors of this, I get here 1001. Zero, zero, one. This is divisible by 7, 7, 1, 7, 7 plus 28, 7 plus 21. This is a multiple of 11, so I can write it as uh, 11 months, 11, 13. And we get the prime factors of 5005. 13 is the prime factor. We stop our division over here. So these prime factors will always give us the product 5005. So, and these prime factors are unique for this particular number. So the fundamental theorem of arithmetic basically states that the prime factors of a composite number are unique for that particular number. All con uh, composite numbers can be written as the product of its primes. So this is the statement of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now we move on to an application of this uh, particular concept. Show that 12 to the power n can never end with a digit 0. Now if I take 12 and write down its prime factors, it's a composite number, so I get 2 into 2 into 3. Now if I take out or increase 12 to the index say 2, the prime factors are also going to be raised to the index 2. If I take the index say n, the prime factors are also being raised to the index n. The prime factors are not going to change. Whatever be the index of 12, they are also going to be raised to that particular index. Here the index was 1. Here the index of this uh, prime factors is 1. Here it is 2. Here it is 2. n, you can take any index, any natural number over here, but the uh, index of the prime factors is also going to change. You will notice over here that the prime factors themselves are not going to change. So if a number has to end with a digit 0, it must have 2 and 5 simultaneously as its prime factors. But here we notice that 2 is there, but 5 is not there. Even if in a number you have only 5, it's not going to end with 0. You must have 2 and 5 both in its prime factors for the number to end with 0. So since the prime factors of 12 will never end uh, with 0 because it will never have 2 and 5 together as its prime factors. Next, we move on to another particular uh, application of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Here, we are given an expression and we are asked to prove is a composite number. So here we have two terms in this expression. And from these two terms, you notice 7 is a common term. So if I take out 7 common, I'm left here with 3 into 5 plus 1. So this becomes 7 into 16. And this is equal to 7 into 2 to the power of 4. 
So whenever we can uh, write down an expression as a product of primes, that particular expression becomes a composite number. Now we move on to the third concept of real numbers that is HCF into LCM of two numbers is equal to the product of the numbers. You take any two positive numbers, multiply the two numbers and multiply the HCF and LCM, you will always get that the product of the HCF and LCM is equal to the product of the two numbers. Here again, I've taken a very simple example, 26 and 91. Now, if I take out the prime factors of 26, I'll get here 2 and 13. If I take out the prime factors of 91, this is 7 into 13. So now, the HCF of these two numbers obviously is 13. And the LCM is equal to 2 into 7 into 13. Now let us take the product of these two. So uh, let's uh, first let's take get the product of LCM. This will be seven, uh, 91 into 2, that is 182. Now multiply 13 with 182, what do we get? 13 to 26, 13 8 104, plus 2 is 6, and 13 once 13 plus 10 is 2, 3, 6, 6. And if we multiply these two numbers, that is 26 and 91, what do we get? We get here 2, 6, 9, 6, 54, 5, 9, 2, 18, 23. So 6, 6, 3, 2. So the product of the numbers is equal to the product of the HCF and LCM. Now this is another application of the same concept that is product of the HCF and LCM is equal to the product of the numbers. Here the HCF is 145 and the LCM is 2175. And this is equal to the product of the two numbers 725 into x because we are asked to calculate the other number. So x will be equal to 145 into 2175 divided by 725. This is equal to x. Now take the divisor as 25. So this becomes 50 and this becomes uh, 29 nines, uh, 25 nines to 25. This is 25 is 200, 175, that is 7. So 29 once 29, 29 threes. Now 145 into 3, that will be 15. And 4 3 is 12, Six, uh, 4 3 is 12 plus 130. And 3 once 3, 435. So this is 435. So we can calculate the other number with the help of the same concept. Now we'll get back to irrational numbers. Now irrational numbers, we have earlier learned that irrational numbers, the decimal expansion of them is neither terminating nor recurring. And they cannot be written in the form of P by Q. Where P and Q are integers, they are co-prime and Q is not equal to zero. So here we are asked to prove that root two is irrational. So we are not going to take the decimal expansion of it and say that it is irrational. We are going to take the theoretical method to prove that it is irrational. Now, what is this method? Here, what we do is we assume that root two is irrational. That means we take them, uh, we negate the statement. We say that, okay, if it is not irrational, let us take it as rational. It can either be rational or irrational. So we are assuming it to be a rational quantity. So I can write down root two as P upon Q where P and Q are co-prime, they are integers, and Q is not equal to zero. Now what we do is we square both the sides. So two is equal to P square upon Q square. So this becomes two Q square is equal to P square. This is equation number one. Now here you notice that two into Q square will give you P square. That means 2 is one of the prime factors of p square. So if uh, 2 uh, is a prime factor of p square, it also has to be prime factor of p. Let us understand this logic. Supposing I take uh, number 16, the prime factor of 16 is 2 to the power of 4. The square root of 16 is 4. Here also I get 2 to the power of 2. So if you have a prime factor for a particular number, then that prime factor will also exist for the square root of the number. So here we get 2 is also a prime factor of p. So what we do next is we write down p is equal to 
2 into r. Why? Because we do not know what p is, but we know that p has one prime factor 2. So what about the other prime factors? They can be taken as a product r. So now if we square both the sides, we'll get here p squared is equal to 4r squared. This is equation number 2. Now let's compare 1 and 2. From 1 and 2, we get 2q squared is equal to 4r squared or q squared is equal to 2r squared. So again from here, we come to the conclusion that if 2 is a prime factor of q squared, then 2 is also a prime factor of q. And from here, we got 2 is a prime factor of p. So now if we get back to our initial statement, we had stated initially that root 2 is p by q, where p and q are integers, they are co-prime and q is not equal to 0. But that is being contradicted because we are getting a prime factor for p and q. That is 2. Hence, our initial assumption has been contradicted. So root 2 is not rational, it is irrational. Next, we have an expression, prove that 3 plus 5 root 2 is irrational. So here what we do is we will take up this expression and proceed in the same method, assume it to be p by q, where p and q are irrational, sorry, p and q are integers, they are co-prime and q is not equal to zero. Next step what we do is segregate the rationals and the irrationals, p by q minus three. Next step, you can take the LCM of the right hand side uh, before you proceed. So this becomes p minus 3q by q. Now keep root 2 on the left hand side and bring 5 to the right hand side. So it becomes by 5q. On the right hand side, you have all rationals. On the left hand side, you have this irrational. So this equation basically is equating an irrational to a rational which is not possible. Hence, this expression is irrational. Even otherwise, if you add an irrational to a rational, it will always be an irrational. Now, this is also a question based on the same uh, theorem, but here the method of uh, approach method, of course, is the same, but there is a slight change in what you need to do over here. Now, root 2 plus root 3, we'll assume it to be p by q, where p and q are co-prime and they are integers and q is not equal to zero. That statement you need to write. Now here what we'll do is we'll put one of these irrationals, transfer it to the other side before we continue. So I can write this this way. Next step what you do is square both the sides. So you get here two is equal to p squared by q squared minus two root three p by q plus three. Now in this equation, you notice that you have only one irrational term. So we'll segregate that. This becomes 2 root 3 p by q is equal to p squared by q squared plus 3 minus 2, that is 1. So this becomes 2 root 3 p by q is equal to p squared plus q squared by q squared. Now transfer all the rationals to the right hand side. So this becomes root 3 is equal to p squared plus q squared by q into p and this 2 comes down and the q goes up. This is q squared originally. So now this q and this q squared will get cancelled. So you are left with p squared plus q squared by 2pq. Again, the right hand side is all rational and the left hand side is irrational and they are equated, which is not possible. Hence, this given expression is an irrational quantity. So these were three different types of questions based on the same concept, uh, proving uh, these as irrationals. And with that, we come to the end of the video. In the next video, I'll take up problems based on HCF and LCF. Thank you for watching. If you are uh, liking the explanation, kindly like and subscribe. Thank you.